Responsible government is a conception of a system of government that embodies the principle of parliamentary accountability, the foundation of the Westminster system of parliamentary democracy. Governments the equivalent of the executive branch in Westminster democracies are responsible to Parliament rather than to the monarch, or, in a colonial context, to the imperial government, and in a republican context, to the president, either in full or in part. If the Parliament is bicameral, then the government is responsible first to the Parliament's lower house, which is more representative than the upper house, as it has more members and they are always directly elected. Responsible government of parliamentary accountability manifests itself in several ways. Ministers account to Parliament for their decisions and for the performance of their departments. This requirement to make announcements and to answer questions in Parliament means that ministers must have the privileges of the floor, which are only granted to those who are members of either House of Parliament. Secondly, and most importantly, although ministers are officially appointed by the authority of the head of state and can theoretically be dismissed at the pleasure of the sovereign, they concurrently retain their office subject to their holding the confidence of the lower house of parliament. When the lower house has passed a motion of no confidence in the government, the government must immediately resign or submit itself to the electorate in a new general election. Lastly, the head of state is in turn required to effectuate their executive power only through these responsible ministers. They must never attempt to set up a shadow government of executives or advisors and attempt to use them as instruments of government, or to rely upon their unofficial advice. They are bound to take no decision or action that is put into effect under the color of their executive power without that action being as a result of the counsel and advisement of their responsible ministers. Their ministers are required to counsel them i.e., explain to them and be sure they understand any issue that they will be called upon to decide and to form and have recommendations for them i.e., their advice or advisement to choose from, which are the minister's formal, reasoned, recommendations as to what course of action should be taken. An exception to this is Israel, which operates under a simplified version of the Westminster system. Canada. In the Canadian system, responsible government was developed between 1846 and 1850, with the Executive Council formulating policy with the assistance of the legislative branch the legislature voted approval or disapproval, and the appointed governor enacted those policies that it had approved. It was a transition from the older system whereby the governor took advice from an executive council, and used the legislature chiefly to raise money. After the formation of elected legislative assemblies starting with Nova Scotia in 1758, governors and their executive councils did not require the consent of elected legislators in order to carry out all their roles. It was only in the decades leading up to Canadian Confederation in 1867 that the governing councils of those British North American colonies became responsible to the elected representatives of the people. Responsible government was a major element of the gradual development of Canada towards independence. The concept of responsible government is associated in Canada more with self-government than with parliamentary accountability, hence there is the notion that the Dominion of Newfoundland gave up responsible government when it suspended its self-governing status in 1933, as a result of financial problems. It did not regain responsible government until it became a province of Canada in 1948. In the aftermath of the American Revolution, the British government became more sensitive to unrest in its remaining colonies with large populations of European descended colonists. Elected assemblies were introduced to both Upper Canada and Lower Canada with the Constitutional Act of 1791. Many reformers thought that these assemblies should have some control over the executive power, leading to political unrest between the governors and assemblies in both Upper and Lower Canada. The Lieutenant Governor of Upper Canada Sir Francis Bond Head wrote in one dispatch to London that if responsible government were implemented, "...democracy, in the worst possible form, will prevail in our colonies." After the 1837 Lower Canada Rebellion led by Louis Joseph Papineau, and the 1837-1838 Upper Canada Rebellion led by William Lyon Mackenzie, Lord Durham was appointed Governor-General of British North America and had the task of examining the issues and determining how to diffuse tensions. In his report, one of his recommendations was that colonies which were developed enough should be granted responsible government. This term specifically meant the policy that British-appointed governors should bow to the will of elected colonial assemblies. 
the first instance of responsible government in the British Empire outside of the United Kingdom itself was achieved by the colony of Nova Scotia in January to February 1848 through the efforts of Joseph Howe. The plaque in the Nova Scotia House of Assembly erected by the Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada reads, First responsible government in the British Empire. The first executive council chosen exclusively from the party having a majority in the representative branch of a colonial legislature was formed in Nova Scotia on 2 February 1848. Following a vote of want of confidence in the preceding council, James Boyle Uniac, who had moved the resolution, became Attorney General and leader of the government. Joseph Howe, the longtime campaigner for this peaceable revolution, became provincial secretary. Other members of the council were Hugh Bell, W. M. F. Desbars, Lawrence O.C. Doyle, Herbert Huntingdon, James McNabb, Michael Tobin, and George R. Young. The colony of New Brunswick soon followed in May 1848 when Lieutenant Governor Edmund Walker had brought in a more balanced representation of members of the Legislative Assembly to the Executive Council and ceded more powers to that body. In the province of Canada, responsible government was introduced with the ministry of Louis Hippolyte Lafontaine and Robert Baldwin in spring 1848. It was put to the test in 1849, when reformers in the legislature passed the Rebellion Losses Bill. This was a law that provided compensation to French Canadians who suffered losses during the rebellions of 1837 to 1838 in Lower Canada. The Governor General, Lord Elgin, had serious misgivings about the bill but nonetheless assented to it despite demands from the Tories that he refused to do so. Elgin was physically assaulted by an English speaking mob for this, and the Montreal Parliament building was burned to the ground in the ensuing riots. Nonetheless, the Rebellion Losses Bill helped entrench responsible government into Canadian politics. In time, the granting of responsible government became the first step on the road to complete independence. Canada gradually gained greater and greater autonomy over a considerable period of time through inter-imperial and Commonwealth diplomacy, including the British North America Act of 1867, the Statute of Westminster of 1931, and even as late as the Patriation of the Constitution Act in 1982 see Constitution of Canada. <laughs> Australia and New Zealand While the various colonies in Australia were either sparsely populated or penal settlements or both, executive power was in the hands of the governors, who, because of the great distance from their superiors in London and the resulting very slow communication, necessarily exercised vast powers. However, the early colonists, coming mostly from the United Kingdom, were familiar with the Westminster system and made efforts to reform it to increase the opportunity for ordinary men to participate. The governors in London therefore set in motion a gradual process of establishing a Westminster system in the colonies, not so fast as to get ahead of population or economic growth, nor so slow as to provoke clamoring for revolutionary change as happened in America. Initially, this took the form of appointed or partially elected legislative councils. Then, during the 1850s, all Australian colonies except Western Australia, along with New Zealand, established both representative and responsible government. Western Australia did the same in 1890. Topic: <laughs> Cape Colony. The Cape Colony, in southern Africa, was under responsible self-government from 1872 until 1910 when it became the Cape Province of the New Union of South Africa. Under its previous system of representative government, the ministers of the Cape government reported directly to the British imperial governor, and not to the locally elected representatives in the Cape Parliament. Among Cape citizens of all races, growing anger at their powerlessness in influencing unpopular imperial decisions had repeatedly led to protests and rowdy political meetings, especially during the early convict crisis of the 1840s. A popular political movement for responsible government soon emerged, under local leader John Moltino. A protracted struggle was then conducted over the ensuing years as the movement known informally as the Responsibles grew increasingly powerful, and used their parliamentary majority to put pressure on the British governor, withholding public finances from him, and conducting public agitations. Not everyone favoured responsible government though, and pro-imperial press outlets even accused the movement of constituting crafts and assaults of the devil. 
Supporters believed that the most effective means of instituting responsible government was simply to change the section of the constitution which prevented government officials from being elected to parliament or members of parliament from serving in executive positions. The conflict therefore centered on the changing of this specific section. Although responsible government merely required an amendment to S.79 of the Constitution, it transpired only after nearly 20 years in 1872 when the so-called responsibles under Moltino were able to command sufficient support in both houses to secure the passage of the necessary bill. Finally, with a parliamentary majority and with the colonial office and new governor Henry Barclay won over, Moltino instituted responsible government, making the ministers directly responsible to the Cape Parliament, and becoming the Cape's first prime minister. The ensuing period saw an economic recovery, a massive growth in exports, and an expansion of the colony's frontiers. Despite political complications that arose from time to time such as an ill-fated scheme by the British Colonial Office to enforce a confederation in Southern Africa in 1878, and tensions with the Afrikaner-dominated government of Transvaal over trade and railroad construction, economic and social progress in the Cape Colony continued at a steady pace until a renewed attempt to extend British control over the hinterland caused the outbreak of the Anglo-Boer Wars in 1899, an important feature of the Cape Colony under responsible government was that it was the only state in southern Africa and one of very few in the world at the time to have a non-racial system of voting. Later however, following the South Africa Act 1909 to form the Union of South Africa, this multi-racial universal suffrage was steadily eroded, and eventually abolished by the apartheid government in 1948. Topic Former British colonies with responsible government 1848 Province of Nova Scotia 1848 Province of Canada 1851 Prince Edward Island 1854 Province of New Brunswick 1855 Newfoundland suspended from 1934 to 1949, then part of Canada, the Colony of New South Wales, and the Colony of Victoria 1856 Colony of New Zealand, the Colony of New South Wales and the Colony of Tasmania 1857 Province of South Australia 1859 Colony of Queensland separated from New South Wales in that year with self-government from the beginning 1872 The Cape Colony, South Africa 1890 Colony of Western Australia 1893 Natal, South Africa 1906 Transvaal, South Africa 1907 Orange River Colony, South Africa 1921 Malta suspended from 1936 to 1947, and from 1959 to 1962 1923 Southern Rhodesia 1940 47 India became a republic in 1950 1947 Pakistan became a republic in 1956 topic in German history in the early 1860s the Prussian prime minister Otto von Bismarck was involved in a bitter dispute with the liberals who sought to institute a system of responsible government modeled on that of Britain Bismarck who strongly opposed that demand managed to deflect the pressure by embarking energetically and successfully on the unification of Germany the liberals, who were also strong German nationalists, backed Bismarck's unification efforts and tacitly accepted that the constitution of Imperial Germany, crafted by Bismarck, did not include a responsible government, the Chancellor being accountable solely to the Emperor and needing no parliamentary confidence. Germany gained a responsible government only with the Weimar Republic and more securely with the creation of the German Federal Republic. Historians account the lack of responsible government in the formative decades of United Germany as one of the factors contributing to the prolonged weakness of German democratic institutions, lasting also after such a government was finally instituted. Topic see also Fusion of powers Topic Notes Topic References Arthur Berrydale Keith. Responsible Government in the Dominions, 1912. Moltino, P.A. The Life and Times of John Charles Moltino. Comprising a History of Representative Institutions and Responsible Government at the Cape. London, Smith, Elder and Co., Waterloo Place, 1900. Status and Respectability in the Cape Colony, 1750-1870, A Tragedy of Manners. Robert Ross, David Anderson. Cambridge University Press, 1 July 1999. 220 pages. ISBN 0-521-62122-4. Topic external links Forsey, Eugene A. 1981. How Canadians Govern Themselves. Government of Canada. p. 58. Hamer, David J. August 1995. Can Responsible Government Survive in Australia? PDF. Papers on Parliament. Parliament of Australia 26. 
archived from the original PDF on the 3rd of October 2008. Rathgeber, Brent, the 10th of September 2014. Irresponsible Government: The Decline of Parliamentary Democracy in Canada. Dundurn Press. ISBN 9781459723. Salas, Dennis. Responsibility Based Environmental Governance. SAPIN, S. 4 1. Retrieved 15 June 2011.